Apple. We are recording video, and it is now time to start it in three, two, one. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instant. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the instance. This is a special episode of the instance. That is to say, it's happening on a Tuesday, which is pretty unusual for us. That's because today, well, technically uh, yesterday afternoon, evening, we had the launch of WoW Classic, and so I'm here, Scott Johnson, also with us, Garrett Weinzerl. Hello, Garrett. Hey, Scott. Happy launch day. Thanks, man. Time well, to, technically, time. day after <laughs> launch day, but I mean, most of us, let's be honest, we're probably getting in today for the first time, and it's not because we couldn't play yesterday. It's because it was, for a lot of us, impossible to play yesterday. It depends on who you ask and where they were at the time and how early they got in, but there are a lot of people who suffered... What often games do suffer at launch, things like slow queue times, uh, being in line forever, having that time fluctuate wildly as you sit there and watch. I ended up on a two-hour stream yesterday giving away free game codes because I was stuck in a queue that would never let me in. And by the time I was finished, even though we had gone down two or 3,000 people in line, it was still the same estimated, estimated time on average that it was when I got in. So uh, that was a real bummer for a lot of people. But, you know... High demand, that's what you expect. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, this is just like the classic experience. Back when we played vanilla, everything was broken. It wasn't as broken last night. It was just a lot of queuing. World server issues, yes, some of that happened. You got snagged with that. While your wife got in fine, you were like left well, out in the ooh, lurch. I got a story, Scott. All I right. got a story, and I'm going to admit to some pretty great degrees of stupidity. Great. Uh Right. Starting now. So uh, Katie and I, and this was something um, we haven't really, we haven't done an episode in a little while. So it would have been a good tip to share with everybody yeah. had we done an episode closer to launch. But you could have logged into the game, I think up to two hours, maybe even longer than that, before they turned these servers on. Oh, I didn't know. So that. you could have gotten into the game and looked at your characters and you could have sat there creating new characters. You could still reserve games up until this point. Yeah, I didn't know so, that. That's news to me. Yeah. That so we got out. in uh, 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 30 minutes ahead of time, mm -hmm. no queue whatsoever, decided to, you know, just just wait because uh, it, it was confirmed by some Blizzard folk that uh, as soon as you could play the game, the enter world button would just turn red. You wouldn't have to log out or anything. You could just sit there staring at your character until the stroke of 3 p.m. Pacific bam, the button turns red, hit it, go in. And we did that, yeah. and we yeah. got in with no issue, no issue whatsoever. The only issue being horrendous lag once we were actually in the game. Itself. Yeah, you because get into the lag and you start running into big wads of people who also knew about your fancy button trick, then then the lag. Yeah, begins. I don't know if 800 players is the actual like cap for a given area, <laughs> but I, I saw a uh, Hazakasas interview where he referred to 800. I think it might have just been an example number. I don't think that's actually how many. Mm. But if 800 were the, was the cap, there was definitely 800 freaking night elves spawning into Shadow that's, Blood. That's a lot of night. That's a lot of blue bodies just that's a lot of blue and purple avatar cosplayers. Yes, it <laughs> is. Um, so we got in and we're like, oh my God, we did it. Yes. We're like so stoked, you know, back in the, like, if you don't know my wife, Katie and I, we actually dated back in high school. Um, and we actually played vanilla wow together mm. all the way back then. Um, although this, we, we didn't start playing until college. We were a little late to the vanilla game, but right. so this is a big deal for us. We we're really excited. We like made a big deal out of it. We ordered, we ordered pizza. We were like, we don't want to cook tonight. We just want to play. Wow. And uh, and it worked, but there was one there was one little hiccup, and mm. the hiccup was called layering. Scott, Ooh, layering, right? Yeah. Katie and I uh, couldn't couldn't. Uh, we, first of all, the the this was literally like a stroke of the servers going live. The chat, the battle net services were just crashing constantly. Mm -hmm. So your friend list would disappear, then it would come back, then it would disappear, then it would come back, and uh, chat was also going down at the same time. So we eventually figured out that if we joined, I think it was local defense, that that actually showed up between layers. Oh, weird. We couldn't, weird. we couldn't get like general chat to show up between layers. It wasn't working for us, but we joined uh, local defense. We typed in there and we were able to see each other so we could actually invite each other to a party, got into the party, still couldn't see each other. Oh. We were in a party for like a good 10 minutes and uh, couldn't, couldn't see each other. 
And then I, this is where my stupidity comes in. I get impatient. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to log out. I'm going to log right back in. No, I'm going to log on. Not exit game. Not exit game. I'm not going to close the game. I'm just going to log out, go back to my character selector. Right. And I did that. I ended up back at the character selector. My game didn't crash or anything weird. It's fine. Everything's looking okay. Mm. I hit enter world. World <laughs> server down. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Okay. Well, I'll try again. Hit it again. Three minute wait, like a three minute load bar. World server down. Mm. And it continued like that, Scott, for two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah, she was in just <laughs> fine playing away, and you were fighting the world server, which I had to fight also. I had a kind of a world server problem. But when I did finally get in yeah. to see at least my character and log in, you then hit the queues. I think our queues were at, I don't know, for a while there on our server, it was like thirteen to 14,000 people in line. Uh, the timer would just jump all over the place from like three hours back down to an hour and a half, back up to three hours, um, which is when I did that stream and you know kind of gave up on it last night. But... Uh, what's crazy is this morning, I figured, well, it's a, it's daytime. Nobody's playing now. They're all waiting until they get home tonight. That's not true at all. I had to log in early this morning, sit in there, and just let my character just sort of sit on his butt uh, and do nothing. And every once in a while, I'll check it, make sure he's moving so they don't get auto-logged out or whatever. And uh, by the time we started our three-hour stream that just ended not long ago, you got in and went, oh, there's queues. They weren't as bad. It was only a few minutes. Not a big deal. But I was a little surprised there were queues today in the daytime. Yeah, I well, I logged in like three separate times this morning for different things. I, d I did a little solo stream this morning. I don't, I don't, I don't usually stream, but I'm so excited about Classic, yeah, so yeah. I was doing it. Yeah. And uh, you know, I logged out for various reasons and logged back in. No issues whatsoever. Every time I logged in and looked at Pagel, the server we're playing on, don't come here. By the way, it is so slapped. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this stay morning, away from Pagel uh, unless you belong to AIE. Then I guess try. But whew, it's yeah, bad right this now. This morning though, it was. Uh, it was it was fine. It, every time I looked, it said medium, and there were like no issues whatsoever getting in. Mm, yeah. So and, then, um, and some servers have fared better than others. There are people I talked to who were like, "Well, the normal server I was supposed to get into, where all my friends are, was just ridiculous, and I want, I would like to actually play this at some point." And so they just went somewhere else, which is kind of a bummer because transfer services and all of that stuff, as far as I know, do not does not apply to the vanilla world in classic. You cannot invoke those services i think to do server transfers maybe down the line they'll introduce such a thing but as it stands today if you started somewhere that's where you're at and that's where you're going to be and there's no crossing over and of course unlike the modern game there's no crossovers for running dungeons or doing uh you know any kind of content where there are ways to do that in the modern game so so yeah i feel bad for some people who who felt kind of forced to go somewhere where their friends weren't maybe those friends will bail and go over there i mean Again, we're just sort of living by the rules of 2004. We all had to do this then. You found out two weeks in that, oh, my best friend's on Darkspear? Shit. I guess I got to go roll a character on Darkspear, and he's Alliance? Oh, man, I was going to go Horde. Like, there's all of those issues are, are, are here again because that's what we wanted, right? That's what we asked for. Yeah, but at, at the same time, like our modern understanding of how these systems worked in 2004, I think is also like causing new issues, like... Our entire mo most of our community, they're all heading for Pagel, Horde mm -hmm. and Alliance. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. We're all going here. Yep. We're all coming here. Yep. So I mean, that's that's that that wasn't you know necessarily. I don't think we knew you know the the the, the kind of cascade of of WoW explosion kind of happened over time. Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't have I think this many. We definitely didn't have this many people all logging on at the same time. Well, one of the things that helped drive it was a peak viewership last night at some point. Or another. When I checked it, it was about nine hundred something thousand. But uh, they crested a million Twitch viewers at one point, simultaneous viewers of all all WoW streams combined, easily eclipsing anything else on the the leaderboard. I mean, Fortnite was pushed to a distant second of like thirty thousand players or something, which is normally a decent number in a slow you know in a slow time for them, but a distant second, uh, and everybody else sort of lined up after that, but dominated the twitch uh board yesterday lots of popular twitchers twitch uh player or twitch uh streamers doing it but also a, a huge part of that number was not necessarily the top streamers doing it and keep in mind ninja the number one streamer that was here is gone now um and he wasn't playing it on mixer just for the record i went and looked um it it was just lots and lots and lots of people with 500 people 100 people a thousand people 
I watched Felicia Day for a while. She had like 810 people watching her stream. Uh, my stream had a couple of hundred. So if you just count everybody up, it was a lot. This wasn't like three streamers that equaled a million. It was a lot of people contributing to that number. And I don't know if Blizzard expected that or not. Maybe they totally did. Maybe they made it easier for some streamers to get in and not have to deal with queues. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. I'm not trying to create a, a controversy or any kind of conspiracy here, but it's possible. And uh, I wonder if you think that's going to actually contribute to either its success or decline. Because they were they were all rabid last night. Now now we get to see if Classic has the staying power and can maintain this over a couple of weeks' time. And I'm not so sure it can. So, oh, I, do, I don't expect it at yeah. all. I think that's I think it's insane to expect that. Mm. Um, I think it was that was that was day one. There, there, there's never going to be more excitement for this game than there was last night. Yeah, that's probably uh, going to be it, the it peak. Is, it is only going to drop off from here. But I mean, that's that's true of most MMO releases. So, sure. I mean, I mean, hell, I was watching BFA streams on day one. I can't tell you the last time I watched a BFA stream. Yeah, but this is this what makes this sort of unusual because this is WoW doing it two times in a row. When they launched in 04, there were no there was no Twitch, there was no YouTube really. There was no, you know, there was no way for them to do any of this. This the launch would have nothing to do with the way we we uh, we get games in front of people these days. But to have the most successful MMO ever, and then to relaunch it in its original pajamas with that much fanfare is a big freaking deal. Like way bigger than I thought. Honestly, when they announced this at BlizzCon a couple of years ago, and they said yes, this is coming, uh, I remember thinking. Well, all right, well, that'll, that's cool that they're doing it. It seems like a response at that time anyway directly to the players that were all jumping off to these private servers. It was a way to, you know, not only calm that whole fire down, but also to sort of own it themselves. And I thought that was good. But I honestly, really, at the time, thought this would be a bit of a blip and not much more. But instead, Blizzard has kind of gone all out on some mostly web marketing, but some marketing stuff that you see here and there. Um, I don't know, man. Have you seen that song commercial with uh, with with uh, your buddy Hodor? Yeah, that looked great. That was awesome, and that's my point. Like they kind of went nuts with it, and it looked really good. It had Ron, Ronda Rousey in there, and who else? The voice of uh, 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 Savannah is in there. Uh, oh, is she? I yeah, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. She's in there. Uh, the the lead. Fr I think that is actually Leroy Jenkins. The guy who did the Leroy Jenkins thing. Did it again. Pretty sure that's him. Uh, God, I hope so. A couple of lead developers in there. I noticed Matt Mercer from, from uh, you know, all things voice work, but of course Critical Role was in there. Like they they filled that up with a lot of fans and stuff. A little shock, you know, people like Felicia Day and some others didn't didn't make a an appearance. But my point is, like they're they kind of are wrapping. It feels like they've gotten close as, as they've gotten closer to this release, and the hype meter has gone up. Blizzard's gotten kind of more tightly around it going oh you guys okay we may really have something here this is going to bring a whole bunch of people back now retaining them or how long they stay i mean that's another issue but in theory they've got a whole bunch of new subscribers that used to be subscribers of the game that haven't played in a long time that are back just for classic and they're paying them 15 bucks and they have access to everything but you know they're getting their wow on again this is like a win across the board for blizzard vanilla players are happy blizzard's making more money giant hype around the game that never hurts for a game this old uh like all things seem like smart moves in my opinion and i used to think this was just such a weird raggedy idea and now i'm convinced that this is actually kind of brilliant and they thought this through and maybe they knew it was going to be this much hype and again in two three weeks maybe we're talking differently about it and this isn't my opinion necessarily we'll get to that in a minute about what we think of our playtime. but just overall as a sort of business move it might be the most positive thing we've gotten out of Blizzard since BlizzCon last year, where we have had a lot of negative since then. Uh, the mess with Diablo Immortal, the getting rid of HGC, the le big layoffs that affected a bunch of people, uh, them canceling the big StarCraft project. Like, that stuff just kind of fell like dominoes. Oh, uh, Morheim leaves, Frank Pierce leaves. You know, it seems like real shakeups. And... Finally, I feel like I have something to talk about that's like, whoa, look at that. That's there's your blizzard doing doing a thing that's huge and big. And while retro, you know, they, they're they're putting the full might behind it. Um, your impression of all that? Am I is that all in my head or does it feel that good to you? It does. I mean, it really does. It, it, I don't know. I expected there to be a big surge in the beginning. 
Um, but I didn't expect it to be this. Like, it's all anyone I know is talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, like, even, like, my hardcore Hearthstone fans, like, even, like, my buddy, it's like, like, Kyle, our mutual friend Kyle. He does not seem particularly interested in this. And yet, you know what we talked about in our text conversations last night? Boom. Only WoW Classic was the only thing we were talking about. Yep. So it's it's certainly, it made a big splash. It's it's on everyone's minds, whether they want to play it or not. It's still something they want to talk about. Right. Um, which, which, which goes a long way. And that's certainly, I mean, it, it, this is all happening so fast. And, and of course, it's going to have a backslide. Yeah, I um, expect it to as well. I mean, it, you know, all good things or whatever. They all have their little bit of slowdown. And this may be a very quick peak and then a long valley. But a lot of people are hoping that the hype surrounding this and what they learn from this internally may inform what happens with wow prime i mean i had a very weird experience playing with you today we played three hours before now i played an orc warrior you played an orc uh warlock warlock and then we also had a shaman with us uh shout out to robert yep, and uh time. he's awesome and it was great it ro rolling with you three i had a really good time but i kept having this feeling while we're doing it like Ooh, I should go do this with like a prime character. I've never played a warrior like this. I should go play a warrior the way they are now, and I should play them from yeah, zero. It hasn't been that long since I've leveled, and I yeah. couldn't be less interested in leveling in prime. So that that thought never crossed my mind. It's it. When's the last time you leveled from zero, though? When's the last time from you went zero? Like, to the it's, roots? it's been a while, but the last time I tried to do it, I've done. I think I've started new level ones twice in BFA and got to around <laughs> level twenty. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm done. I've done this a billion times. Yeah, get me out of here. I mean, uh, but part of yeah. it, a big part of it for me, I think, is the social atmosphere, just the feeling of the world, feeling alive, and certainly phasing in modern WoW and retail WoW has helped a lot. But mm -hmm. it is not like this. Not at all. No. Um, and so while, you know, yeah, it's not perfect. They're like, if I got a I move, the bag space is driving me up a wall. It's the number one thing oh in classic gosh, yeah. that is Even absolutely driving me batshit. Yeah. But, uh, Inventory's but a, bad. a lot of it is easily glazed over because there's so many people running around. The, my random uh, interactions with people that I don't know, uh, are, they're just happening constantly because I'm, I'm, there's always... 20 other people at least and i'm talking middle of the day today when i'm streaming and calling at work <laughs> right um you know minimum 20 people last night it was insane it yeah. was just like a sardine explosion into a into the starting zone but like that is something i haven't had in retail wow in forever well we I had mean, we had that right up through oh um it feels like we had that right up through what well, uh, probably early cataclysm because they had just started experimenting with phasing in wrath and it was kind of toward the end of wrath although wrath gate had a bit of phasing where before the wrath gate event things were normal at the gate and you could fly past it and run around it and everything was cool and then when you had that event now it's permanently on fire and people are moaning and screaming and that was how the <laughs> world was presented to you and so so you had a, a form of phasing starting to sort of happen that technology was being you know sort of worked out by the time Cataclysm rolled around, it was still, in fact, I remember at launch, still really hard to get around and do your stuff because just people, 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 people. And I don't think we'd done, uh, like, stopped having mobs be tagged by somebody. You could share mobs and share quest re uh, rewards and that sort of stuff. Before all of that, it was still kind of that chaos. And part of me, uh, I mean, let's look at it in the real-time development of the game. While that was happening in real time, I was going, man, I wish they had it so it was easier. Or I wish they'd do it like this other MMO, which now has basically loot sharing for everybody in the zone. So you don't have to sit in line and wait for a thing to happen. Ooh, they're bringing it. Ooh, they changed it. Ooh, that's cool. Like, we're happy with the tech as it changed. But going back to this and walking into, I don't know, uh, freaking Duratar and seeing 90 people lined up to get a quest from a dude and then running around going, there are no boars left. It's only boar corpses. And we're waiting for some interminable <laughs> you know, freaking respawn rate. And like All of those things come flooding back. I know a lot of people really love that, but I guess I want to say that I think two things can be true at one time. That it's fun to go back to that and to see those crowds and to see the queuing and to see people come up with organic solutions to a problem, which is like these boars only spawn so often, so get in line and we'll each take a turn. You know, like That was happening last night for sure on a few of the streams I watched. Uh, part of me really loves to see that again because, again, it's a throwback to this, you know, thing. 
But part of me also really loves those quality of life improvements that the main game has. So I still feel that way. I still feel very strongly that those improvements are things we wanted, we demanded, we asked for. Now we have them. And I think they're good that we have them. But I also really think it's cool I can go back to this kind of janky mess uh, and fiddle around in there and have a good time. Like, I had a really good time today. That was really fun. And I'll tell you the number one reason. It's what you've said, and I'll say it again. It's because I'm playing with people I like, and we're having fun, and we're laughing, and we missed a thing barely, and oh my gosh, we almost died, and we got to like watch out for each other and warn each other that you're about to aggro five more dudes, and those quill boars look pissed, and there's just a something about those early days that's great to recreate that today. No question. Dude, the, love it. The moment where we we pulled the elite quill bore and also accidentally like three others and we all just went run like that's something that doesn't happen in the game anymore. Right. Like very rarely. Rarely, it, it does. It can happen, like, but it's usually like one guy aggroed fifty mobs by accident and nobody cares to save him. Like it's rare that you're going to be in real danger anymore. Um, and there's so many layers of systems now that that can become a little overwhelming. There's something about the simplicity that I really like right now, which is get in do the stuff. I got a new thing. I go to my trainer. I pay a little money. Now I got it. I can use it. Uh, it's a simple approach and it's a simple RPG. And the only thing I would say about this, and the reason I don't think it has the kind of legs some people say it does, is there are better RPG systems out there. I'm not just talking about WoW Prime. I mean like lots of RPGs that have taken the best ideas from WoW and taken them to new places and in some cases better places. And that includes themselves. Um, and so I think some of that stuff's just going to feel archaic. I can tell you who this is not for. If you're somebody who came into the game, <coughs> let's say mid-Cataclysm or Pandaria or something like that, and there's plenty of people who have, I don't think you're going to care about vanilla. I think you're going to poke your head in there and go, Ugh, okay, well, I'm good. I don't need to do this. That's the beauty of it because they've made this game an add-on to your launcher. It's just there. It's part of your subscription. You can play it or not. You can install it or not. It's not a mandatory thing. It's not a separate thing. You have to separately invest in it. And that, I think, is the brilliant move. The fact that they didn't charge extra for this is a huge deal. I do wish they made a cheaper subscription level for people who just want Classic, because I know those exist. So if you could get in there for six ninety nine or something and only play that, I think that would be a real boon to those people, no question. But I think from a business standpoint, Blizzard's going to retain more people and attract more people, and more importantly attract more returning players with the model as it is um and we'll see if they change that over time anyway i uh, i think you're absolutely right i'd like to see that lower lower uh sub as well but it's, it's clearly not happening so no and for you and i, I we don't care right because we want both we want all of it and we're just yeah it absolutely all. i mean I, I i was this the timing for this for me is perfectly uh, perfect i was getting pretty burnt out on retail so uh i couldn't be more ready to do this <laughs> didn't expect though to have i didn't expect to come out of this going oh there's some stuff i kind of want to try and mess around with in retail aka prime we still don't have a good word for it people we just call it whatever but i keep hearing retail so that's where i'm and, you're, and you know what and you're probably right i'd take i'd go start an undead hunter or undead um uh, warrior which is kind of the, where i'm itching to play because i've been in silver pine in a long time i kind of want to go do that and you're probably right. I'll hit like 20 and go, oh, I don't, I don't want to. I don't, I'll just, I'm done here. But if you went and did it in live right now, man, I think you'd be like, oh, man, there's so many people. We're all helping each other out. That dude just saved my bacon when I accidentally pulled seven damn, uh, what's in Silver Pine? Wolves. Yeah. But then, <laughs> I don't know, man. There's so many things. You And you you need to play it to remember them. Like, we've we've talked 100 times on the show leading up to this launch. Oh, yeah, remember this, remember that. Or we'd look at their bugs list that aren't actually bugs, and we'd say, oh, people think that's a bug. It's not a bug. But even then, even if yeah, you paid well, full attention, it's not until you get your hands dirty that you're like, oh, right, that happens. Ugh. You know? It's um, it's a different structure, different folks kind of thing, though, right? Because I know you, you don't like uh, minim like the, the dead zone on the hunter. The fact that there's this, first of all, <laughs> that you can't just, uh, ranged attack even when they're on you but there's straight up just a range on hunter where you can't attack period because they're too close to use range attack but too far away to use melee right there's i a love mi that minimum range. i didn't no. realize how much i missed that i hadn't even thought about it i mean you know, i was on near what last last episode talking about how i i missed feeding my pet just because i thought having a weird little like crappy tamagotchi mechanic for hunter was just a fun little piece of role play yeah um 
I hadn't, I, I knew I obviously like I, I've watched a lot of videos. I've done a lot of reading. I've been, I'm pretty hyped for this game. So I've been kind of re-educating myself on what to expect when I get back in. Cause it's been a while. I don't remember all this stuff. I hadn't thought about the dead zone for Hunter, but now that I'm in the game and I'm doing it on, you know, I've, I've decided to go back and make my old main and start playing Hunter again. I forgot. Like it's fun be- for me because it adds this extra level, like this extra level of like this skill floor that you have to, you know, like you must be this tall to ride. And like, I, f- I feel more skilled at level eight on a hunter because, Ooh, I got one more range shot in before they got to, to, to melee distance. You know, I feel a sense of, uh, of accomplishment and, and I, I don't buy into the old oh, retail. Wow. is watered down. I, I think that's all whatever. It's just a different way to do an MMO with, with improvements and whatnot. But, but there yeah. is some of the clunk, what you might think is clunk that I really enjoy. I mean, I, Sometimes clunk can be perceived as clunk, but really it's depth. And I and I and so I try not to mix those up in my head. I think feeding your pet is depth. I think buying arrows is clunk. Um, I yeah, think, I think that's fair. I think I mean, it's it's to me though. I look at that and 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 I don't mind it because it's again it's a, it feels like it makes the world just feel that much more alive. Mm-hmm. Because if like I was playing an RPG or whatever and I was thinking about it and role playing, it's like, oh well, yeah. An arrow is a physical item. I mm-hmm. have to keep them somewhere. I yeah. will it eventually eventually run out. Right. So I have to eventually go back to town and get new arrows. Yeah. Over, you know, it, it, there's a reason they did it. it in the first place, right? Like that does it does yeah. add to the to the game in that way. It's just over the long haul does it, or can other systems feel better and not worry about that? You know, when sitting in the chat says both of those are incredibly subjective examples. Yeah, they are. Like this this entire thing, this whole experiment of classic and its launch in my mind is the most subjective thing blizzard's ever done because yeah that, they're they're basically saying here's an old game play it and we're saying this yeah is- let's do it i mean that's weird it's a weird dichotomy everything about this is weird so yeah it, it, it for me it's such a, a modern light a weirdly modern lightning rod for my kind of exhaustion with internet culture yeah um because i think there's really great things about both versions of wow i truly do yeah. Uh, I really like playing both versions. Now that it's out, I can say that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I may burn out on classic and tell it to go suck an egg in a, in three <laughs> weeks, and y'all can y'all can write me. But like, I I really like so much. Like even like you and I, we love Heroes of the Storm. We don't play Dota two. Mm-hmm. But you know what? A lot of other people play Dota two. A lot and of people. Yeah, I, mean, love it. I think last hitting is really dumb. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, a a mechanic that makes no sense. Why would you just not want to kill the thing that's trying to kill you? Right. Oh, sorry, it's not your job to get the last hit so you get the gold. I can't stand that mechanic. It drives me nuts. So I yeah. love Heroes of the Storm where it doesn't exist. Right. However, you know, dude, the international, like, it's still really entertaining to watch. And it's a really good esport because of that added layer of complexity that comes from what we may look at uh, as people who don't play Dota as, like, not the most inspired <laughs> or uh, or uh, kind of well-thought-out game design. But right. it, it ends up, you know, adding an extra layer for players that do like it. Yeah. I think it's also possible to acknowledge that you're having a good time with it, but it's also possible to say these two or three things I've already run into are these would have been called bugs and the forums would have been, would have been on fire about them and Blizzard would be asked to fix them. And they did. If you go back in time and look at 2005's freaking, you know, patch notes or, or you know, patch notes all the time, they're always going to say, okay, well, we tweak this, we fix this or whatever. We're getting a snapshot of a game that isn't exactly launch. You know, it's 1.12. What is it? One point o2 whatever it is it's it's patched in a little bit um you're also getting some changes with uh the graphical settings there's a button for classic if you hit that it tries to set everything to classic with the one exception of the draw distance is not even an option it's just far as best i I don't remember i honestly can't remember like if draw distance was that a thing like you're pretty certain it is but i don't know i don't remember well enough to maybe say maybe it may not have been that, that slider or not yeah but it's certainly i'm with you the draw distance certainly seems longer than i remember no i'm i'm 100 percent sure of it from the standpoint of if you go out to those islands near senjin village and you look back to duratar and you you could not see duratar or the beach there it was just like a, and, it, and if you had to think max best pc you had at the time it didn't matter they seem to have retained all of that. And then there are options beyond that. There's some color and lighting and some specular highlighting and some other stuff that they've gone ahead and left in here. Ground clutter. The grass moves when you run through it. The water can be vanilla or updated. 
I recommend the updated. The vanilla water gives me a headache. Um, so so they haven't you know they haven't stuck a flag in the ground and said we're not moving from here. But they basically given players the option. You know the players if they really want to make it look like shit, go four by three, knock it down to minimum, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yes, I think that the the draw distance is better, and I actually think it really helps. My, see, I'm. This is this is the problem with me. I'm into visual advancement. I'm into games that get better looking over time. Um, I love that WoW has continued to look better every time they put out a new expansion. They make ways of making this old engine work and and all of that. So I don't love that I'm going back to what passed for this stuff in 2004. And I do wish there was a way to sort of visually turn that on and off. You have made you made a bunch of good points while we were playing today about armor and stuff. You just can't do it. And I get it. Um, it yeah, that would be hard. They would have to redesign all the armor in the game. Because if you had modern models with the old armor, it would look really out of place. Right. So, so, uh, so everything kind of being the way it used to be... But you know, it's it's it. This is essentially the modern engine retrofitted for classic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we do get the modern shadows, the modern water, the modern lighting, like you said. So it is, in a way, significantly visually embellished over what we were playing back in the day. Not to mention widescreen, and also I've got a 4K monitor. This thing looks gorgeous. Yeah, it looks great at that at that res. I as well. I was playing it in 4K today. Uh, the stream was only 1080, but this but the the 4K native resolution looks amazing. And I thought about putting it in like. I don't know, 1024 by 768, four by three, just to remind myself <laughs> what that looked like then, because that's what I would have been running in 03, 04 when I was in the beta and then the game. So, uh, and only about, I think I was playing on a 19 inch tube or something, some shitty setup. I don't remember, but uh, that, that could be fun. But part of me also just today wants to just do an experiment. I want to go see the modern game and play a warrior from zero to five. And see what that felt like compared to what this feels like. And really just kind of compare the things. I'm going to actually do that so that when we have a show on Saturday or Friday, I want to be able to speak to that. Just just as okay. an example. I may not go very far with it because I think you're probably right. I'll hit like 20 and go, okay, I'm good. Because I do that all the time. I, yeah, how many level 20s I have just sitting around that I tried to do this with in the past? I have a short memory. I'm just going to do it again. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, so here's some other stuff uh, surrounding the launch. One of the most interesting things, and I saw some of this happen in streams yesterday, and maybe some of you did as well, but people coming up with solutions for games limitations. On launch night, you've got way too many people in the zone, all trying to do the first initial quest, and people started queuing, in particular the one I saw, for Boars and Duratar, where... They would, <laughs> they would line they literally up. Literally stood in the line. Yeah, they literally stood in the line. If a boar would pop, guy in the first in line would kill the boar, get the loot, leave. Next guy, same deal. Next guy, same deal. And if you needed a bunch of boars in a row, you just kept getting in the back of the line, wherever the back of the line was at that point, and just kept moving forward until you spawned through and got it. There's something great about that, right? Like something great about player provided solutions to problems. I find that really creative and emergent, and I really enjoyed that. Um. But from a game design standpoint, in 2004 and five, we probably didn't love that. We were probably like, oh, could you make it spawn more? Or how about don't make it so I tag a thing and two guys can kill a boar and that counts for both of them. Or as long as he does damage to it or something. You know, like those sorts of things. Like I could see us saying that then. But today, it heartens me to see a civil response to a problem, which is the boars are slow to spawn. And that's kind of cool. So yeah, I like that. and and the spawn has been is is definitely faster than it was back in the day. They are taking into account how many people are in the zone, so that's a a, a note, noteworthy improvement. But yeah, yeah, I mean it's uh it's classic. I mean some of that stuff like we were playing in a in a party, and if a quest item dropped, it only dropped for one of us, not for all of us. That's something that um I I miss. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would. I wish they would just say, yeah, you know what, that's pretty good in live. Let's just let's just drop that in. But they clearly. Uh, made a, a a pretty hard decision to keep this as close to original as possible, mm-hmm. uh, and it seems they've really only made compromises where they think it would really make for a negative gaming experience. Well, like you so and your like your layering experience, you know, there's not not much yep. you could do about that. Um, but they they probably had to do that. Imagine if everybody was in that spot, you'd have a crash server, just straight up. 
like on launch night, you'd be screwed. You just wouldn't be able to play at all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about like multiple hour long queues last night yeah. and and latency issues because there were so many players. Could you imagine it without layering? Mm -hmm. No, it would, I, be worse. it would be terrible. And yeah. and again, there is something about the spectacle of walking into that space and seeing a thousand people. Um, because that was, I mean, MMOs have never truly lived up to that dream. The dream was everybody all in one universe, everybody all in one space, working on their own thing, doing their own stuff, whatever. In theory, that sounds amazing on paper. You hear about that and you go, oh, that's so cool. But in practice, it just doesn't work. It it's, doesn't matter how hot your computer is. Eventually, there are too many polygons on screen and you just can't do it. Uh, or it doesn't matter how many, uh, you know, uh, how quick your spawn rate is. It won't be enough if enough people are there. Like the solutions they've come up with over the years are good and smart and forward thinking. But it does take us away from that original dream, which we may never reach. I don't know. The closest thing to it is EVE Online, which is one giant shard and everybody's in it. But that's space. That's different. It's outer space with ships and no nothing else, you know? And spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. And no, <laughs> and, and you don't got trees to worry about or freaking, you know, buildings to deal with or any of that stuff. It's just it's just space. And so... Yeah, I, I get... I get My jimmies get wrestled when people are like, you've online did it. And I'm like, yeah, it's not the freaking no, same. Not even close. Oh, I hate that argument. I hate it. I mean, I respect Eve for what it is. And by the way, it's great that yeah. they do what they do because they can and they should. But in a, in a world where you've got terrain and foliage and buildings and people and stuff and objects, you can't just, you can't cram everybody in there. You just can't. It's not feasible. Um, so anyway, I just, I just think that stuff is at the same time cool, but also, I also recognize that it was a point of, change like you see this stuff and go yeah that's gonna change because that that didn't fly people didn't stick around for that that's the thing that was weird so that got improved on like you can't deny those things it's easy to go nostalgia soak me in it wipe me down with it shove it up my butt i'm having a great time <laughs> like you can do that all day but at some point you have to just look at it realistically and go okay well no that there's a lot of that here and that's great but take all that away and you're left with all right well this is fun and it was amazing in 04 and it was innovative and we've come so far from all the other MMOs at the time but then we kept moving and we kept changing and you could argue a direction here or there was the wrong one but this idea that expansions ruin this game it's purity is where it needs to be i mean come on really life life man life changes all right uh, yeah but uh, i don't know that you can't let that get to you because there's always going to be those people who are just yeah. black and white and refuse to, you know, have a, an adult conversation. And, and so that's what, that's what I'm getting at. Like work. Wow. Classic is such, and versus versus retail. It's such a big example of that for me, because I look at this like a different edition of D and D. Right. Like, you know, if you prefer third edition to fifth edition that, you know, cool. I get it. It has slightly different mechanics. You know, maybe you prefer a way it did it. Uh, I think if you like fourth edition, you're probably a crazy person, but that's on you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe you think I'm crazy. Well, that's why it's so, as, Al as Alex said it again, and I agree. That's why it's great to have both versions. Whatever I'm in the mood for, I can go do it now. Yep. And I'll I tell you what I want, and I'll probably never get, is a version of Classic that they modify. Yeah. They won't do it. Yeah. Although, I still say I could see them doing snapshot versions of the game in other expansion eras. So. Oh, definitely. I think that's... Yeah. Dude, if this is a success, that is 110% on yeah, the table. I think so, too. And I love that if, idea. If, if I, loser, uh, whatever, whatever their metric is for, a six, for success for this game, mm -hmm. they'll never tell us. <laughs> but if they, mat, if they hit that and it stays there long enough, they're going to they're gonna totally announce BC Classic. Because I'd, play, I'd Classic. play Wrath of the Lich King right now, and that's yep. all I'd want to play. <laughs> yep. Yep. I would like to skip Cataclysm and go straight to Miss after that. Yeah. That'd be all right. Oh, there are parts of Cataclysm I really like, though. I don't know. I'm torn on that. Oh, I did like that. That final raid was good. You're right. You're right. It, it had some really good five minutes, too. You peel, peel really the good. giant scab off a dragon. Tell me the last time you got to do that. You mm. know, I'm trying to think of, the, mm. like, I don't think I've ever really strongly disliked the dungeons and raids of any particular expansion, and that's more or less my favorite thing to do in wow so yeah, yeah they've you know always what? Give me it. it all. Give okay. me all the wow. <laughs> I'm happy to play any wow you want to send my way. Just makes me happy. I mean, in theory, it's already there, right? Because you could just take a character at appropriate level and go do that content with your friends. It's just that the, it's just that the population is just it. not there. 
Yeah, right? I come back to my, I think one of the main reasons I'm really enjoying Classic right now is because there's so many people doing the same stuff at the same time. I think if I, if I was like, yeah, let's go raid Deathwing. And like, there's like one person just like, let's do it. It's not the same. Yeah. I don't understand the question or the, the comment from Sony online. I don't get that. Anyway, I'm not going to bring it up, but I don't understand why it's saying it here. Are we forgetting about that? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's that. Uh, all yeah, good. Let's just keep A going down the line of how many viewers everyone has. Yeah, we, who yeah, cares? So. Activision Blizzard it's shares. <laughs> it's not really a metric that matters here, I don't think. Uh, Activision Blizzard shares Snowball with, uh, or sorry, shares Snowball. They didn't share anything. Their shares, that meaning their stock price, Snowballs with World of Warcraft's re-release. Think of it as uh, Br uh, Braxis Holdout. <laughs> when things snowball and go bad for your team, uh, are, you, are you calling that? A, are you calling Brexus a, a snowball battleground? A guy? little bit, occasionally, sometimes, not always. Sometimes, let's just say it ha it can with the right comp problem. Let's just say that. <laughs> I'm sure there's. I'm sure somebody would say something. Anyway, ATVI shares a shot up. That's Activision uh, Blizzard's little shortened thing, whatever that is. Uh, Black Activision is mainly what it's for. Anyway, four point seven percent to 51 bucks a share uh, as the Irvine, California company's decision to re-release World of Warcraft. Free to subscribers uh, also appeared to stoke enthusiasm among investors. So what you're seeing there is investor reaction to the hype, and maybe hopefully that will retain because that'd be nice. You know, but higher stock price means less pressure from Activision, which means Blizzard doesn't have to look like the Activision crony they appear to be in the last year. Uh, so that's good, right? I guess. Well done, guys. <laughs> I mean, stock prices uh, drop and rise and whatever, but people are pretty pretty bullish on this uh, on this release. Uh, you're gonna send me down the same uh, hole of there were major layoffs before this year, folks. This isn't the first time it happened. No, this one just seemed worse because all the other stuff was going on. It yes, it was certainly compounded with all of the other bad uh, uh, bad news coming out of Blizzard. Yeah. But yeah, everything was so visual, like. I don't know. You went from that really weird moment at BlizzCon, a few minute weird moments at BlizzCon, to <laughs> it just cascaded. It felt like it just cascaded. And it felt like there was such a sea change going on with Morheim leaving and everything else. And so I feel like that stuff just got, it just felt worse. Any one of those things could happen any other year on its own, and they have before cancellations, removal of a department layoff or whatever it's just that they just kept happening it felt like every couple of weeks you had bad news about blizzard which is why i'm so excited about this week because this is like cool i like this stuff a lot yeah well i mean because we're still fans in spite of it so it's nice to you know yeah have a win the fanboy uh juice runs runs freely through our pipes weird to say that yes that's yeah, a probably not the way i should very say very disturbing way to put it but i'll roll with that scott <laughs> Uh, what else? Okay, let's talk about our time in the game today. Um, anything jump out at you as a surprise, or is it just what you hoped it would be? Are you hoping for more? You, and you had some more playtime yesterday that I didn't have, but uh, given all the time you've spent, where, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself at level 60 and doing everything and yes. going full-blown? Yes. Without all a right. doubt, yes. Right. I am going... I think this is going to be my my main game for, for a month or two. Um, I'm... I'm liking it more than I thought I would. I can't really put my finger on why. Yeah. Uh, again, a lot of the weight for me seems to be coming down to kind of the communal experience of it. Um, I think it's just kind of crazy how many people are all playing at the same time. Plus, a lot of my friends are playing that I actually, you know, like playing video games with. Hell, my, my like Battle Royale buddies that I almost exclusively play Apex and PUBG with are playing this game now. Did it weird you out or did me that the thing's only four gigabytes total and that seems tiny in today's hard drive world yes 100 percent. that yeah, really yeah. Cause, blew, cause, that wow. blew me away um i have a pretty good size ssd right now yeah. and i still don't put retail wow on it because it's such a giant chunk of space yeah it's huge i have it on an external drive actually now that you mentioned that a usb drive usb c b usb c no usb two three usb three that's what i use a USB 3 drive. And it sits over there humming away going, hey, you want some modern WoW? And I say, no, I got this 4 gig install over here on, you know, it's as, <laughs> as big as a phone game, basically. Um, which made me think, by the way, this little vanilla package could go anywhere. And I mean anywhere. I download iPhone games bigger than this. So 
I'm not saying put it on phones, but I'm saying. Oh man, good, good luck like <laughs> managing how many damn spells you're gonna have by the end of this on a phone. I guess so. I don't know, man. Blizzard will release a uh, an add-on like a little doohickey you plug your phone into that just has like uh, 16 buttons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for for iPhone and Androids. This will be a good experiment, though. Uh, this leveling thing to to follow up with you. Because I have this guess, we'll, we'll know Friday because Patrick will say one way or the other, but I have this feeling Patrick's probably not going to do a lot in there. He's not really sold on this. I, no, I, I, I am just imagining that Patrick uh, continues uh, his belief that it is not for him, only this time, uh, you know, not being into it. Right. I've, I have a feeling I'll end up with a mount, so 20 at least. Wait, 40, sorry. 40 is where you used to get mounts? Land mounts? Is that right? Or was it 60? No, 60 uh, was the high speed. 40 when you got your yeah. slow mount right. that cost a fortune, and 60 was when you got your fast mount that cost uh, an amount that you definitely were not going to have by 60 no. unless you played the uh, the auction house like jazz. Yeah, they, <laughs> they really forced you into auction house uh, proficiency in that. I forgot about that. So here's another thing I've sort of forgot about. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'll end up, but I want to follow this through and I want to hear when Garrett hits 40 and I want to talk about where you're at and how you're feeling. I suspect you'll be as honest as anybody, whether you're loving it or not. So the show will have a fun little running experiment one way or the other with at least one of us who decides to go all the way. Uh, I'm going to be very curious about that. So we'll see what happens. None of the raid stuff's there because I know there's some, didn't somebody ding 60 already like the day of. Or some nutty thing like that. Some crew got together I and heard. Man, I haven't see. heard anything about that. Hold on, I've, but uh, I, that's also not the kind of stuff I'm particularly interested in. I'm I'm more kind of interested in like the milestones, like Twitch hitting a million and stuff like that. Yeah, that's um, true. I will be tuning into the Race for World first eventually, but I haven't really, I haven't even peeked in on that yet. Let's see here, vanilla raid history. Oh no, this is old. Classic WoW. There's no way. There's just no way anyone's sixty yet. I mean, it's possible. Maybe not. I, find that I thought I read this unlikely. yesterday. I thought somebody was saying, oh, there's already some group who's figured out a way to maximize everything and already level. Well, uh, it is the internet after all, so it may not have been true. It, yeah, you never know. Plus, I didn't really, I should have saved it and kept it because, of course, we were going to talk about it today, and now I can't find it. Well, anyway. No, nah, yeah, Chad, Chad, Chad's saying this is, there's just no way. Yeah, how can that be, right? That's, there's too much. We have, the, we have the hive mind of chat on our side, Scott. I'm, yeah. I'm sure one of them would be like, already, here's the link. Yes, it's true. It was this person. They were wearing this shirt. and Oh, here we go. Eating this snack when it happened. Uh, Shadow, sorry, Shad01, oh, oh, I don't know how you say your name. It says, believes the top player currently is in his 40s. So that's probably more like it. Whoever's really that's, crazy is in their 40s now. So That seems a lot more realistic. When do you think you hit? When do you think you cap? Just to guess. I'm not saying you're, you're, there's no clock, but if you had to guess, when does Garrett hit would, level 60? I would put myself on my solo character that I play in my own free time. Uh, I bet, I bet my hunter will be 60 in two and a half months. Okay. That sounds about I, right. I plan to take my time. I'm in no rush. I have no, I have no, uh, shimmers in my eyes about raiding as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, and you've got just, you, a reminder. You have no. Um, I mean, you have PvP coming and some other stuff, but you don't. You don't really have like. There's no new expansion on the horizon. <laughs> no, you're you're just sort of no. But dude, I am because I didn't. I never hit max in vanilla. I got, I got to like 42. That was the highest oh, I made it right, in vanilla. Right. Right. And I uh, I'm so excited to do max level dungeons. Max level dungeons in original. Wow, they were nuts. Yeah, they were hard. They were they were long. This is sounding dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. They were throbbing. Yeah, you um, didn't know what the f to do. You had to get exactly, that far to start exactly. listening to that guy yell at you. Forty man I raid am, content. Ooh boy, I'm so excited. So excited for max level dungeons. Uh, does Alex says method or some other guild are claiming they were aiming for molten core clear in one week? One week from today, or mean a week once they start it? Probably that. Probably take it probably from yesterday at six p.m. Yeah, let's say today. Yeah, let's say I think that's realistic. I mean, those guys are are 
crazy good at World of Warcraft. And there's no figuring out. You don't need to figure any of this thing out. It's we're going to need to get it tuned, get fire resist gear, you get geared up mm -hmm. and go. Yep. <laughs> I think the first guild that just gets into MC is going to be the first one to clear it. I agree. Uh, Do we know how the fights go? Yeah. It's all there. I want to watch. No. I'm not going to run any of that. I just know I'm not. I'm not going to tune. I'm not going to. I don't have time for any of that. I just don't. So I'm going to watch a lot of streams when that comes around. I'm excited I, to do I, that. I, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that you might get bit by a bug. That you might you might be like, oh, I want to hit 60. And then you're going to hit 60. And then you're going to do some five-mans with people. And you're going to be like, oh, man, these, level, these max level dungeons are actually kind of challenging. Mm. And it's a good team-building exercise. Mm-hmm. Now we're I'm making making friends. Can I kill Who Hogger? Can we do Hogger now? Is that a th I mean, we can't, but can oh, some totally? Okay, Hogger. I mean, it would be thing. we're Horde, so we would have to be moving through some. Uh, I was playing Horde with you. We'd have to be moving through some some Alliance territory. Right, but that's true. Tell me, Scott, come on, come on over to the Alliance side. <laughs> come on over. We got cookies. Well, we were gonna do Night Elves today. We didn't end up doing it, but I do have a dude over there all set and ready to go. Forgot his name. It's like Gunderson or. Some stupid thing. <laughs> Garrett just waltzes into our server today, and makes a horde character with four letters, like he's some kind of freaking wizard. How'd you do that? I got Gar. It's G A R H. I mean, I wanted double R because yeah. it's you know half of my name, and that was taken. So uh, I went with the H. The H is good. It sounds hordy. Sounds like something a freaking <laughs> you know orc would do. <laughs> that would be his name. I was really impressed with that. My guy. What's my guy's name? Uh. Uh, I forgot already. Oh, it was something fun. Oh, geez. What, what the hell was your uh, name? This, this is great radio. It's not Ger Gerp. is the one I have reserved for a hunter. It uh, wasn't like Ben. It was, it was something with a B, but yeah, I can't like remember Benderson now. Benderson or like, Buggernut. Bu 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 I don't remember. Man, uh, th this is a failed. This is over. <laughs> this bit. We're done. We're done. Moving on. Uh, three hours and I already forgot his damn name. Barnabas. That's his name. Barnabas. Barnabas. There we go. <laughs> Barnabas, thank you, Chad, for like, remembering like D &D it. real, like, D&D name. Like, yeah. you're going to role-play this orc. Yeah, old Barnabas. Um, Good old Barnabas. Uh, let's do... That's probably about it for that. We're going to have more, obviously, on Friday. Um, Patrick will be here, and we'll mm -hmm. have a little more dust settled, a little more uh, feedback from community and other things on how things are going for people in Classic. We'll be looking at your emails very closely. I do want to play one today, so here's this. Hear ye, hear ye. Why? It's the town crier. <laughs> and by play email, I mean read it. Uh, here it is. This is from, let's see, Nevermore. Uh, friend of the show. Great member of our community in AIE. Sweetest person ever. She's very sweet. And she sent this in. I would like to give a huge shout out to Ragorik. I think is how you say it. Ragorik. In the AIE guild on Pagel. He went above and beyond helping another guild member that got lost by grouping up and showing uh, them where to go while questing and also helped troubleshoot settings via Discord. After realizing that Rag, sorry, Rigoric, uh had been helping this guildie for over an hour, I whispered him to say thank you for being awesome and I appreciate it. He then told me that he was brand new to the AIE guild and hadn't played any other games with us before. He has been a listener of the Instance and the AIE podcast for a long time, so he decided to join us in WoW Classic. I think Ragorik, uh, Rag Ragorik, I'm going to say that wrong every time, is a perfect example <laughs> of what we look for in members of our community, and I wanted to give him the attention and the kindness, uh, or the attention for the kindness. What? Him the attention that his kindness deserves. There you go. Love Nevermore. Well, that's just the sweetest thing. I love that kind of stuff. So, uh, well done, Ragorik. And if you're still listening to the show, uh, we're, uh, we're, that makes me really happy to hear that. We strive for that sort of stuff in the guild. And uh, big ups to Nevermore for giving him a shout out. That was really, really nice. That uh, makes me very happy to hear. Except, also, hi, Nevermore. Also, I can't read worth shit today. So, Haven't haven't seen you since Jocelyn's wedding, but hi. Oh, yeah. Jocelyn has now been married how long? A year? A little less than a year. Uh, the uh, wedding was in February. Okay. Because I was in Toronto freezing my butt off. Yeah, you were. Florida man. Not ready for that. Florida man doesn't know how to handle <laughs> the cold. <laughs> this is so true. All right, uh, next uh, Friday, we're going to do this again. We're going to get Patrick in here. We're going to break it all down. We'll have some other Blizzard stuff to talk about. Um, but you can expect a lot of classic talk. So hopefully you enjoyed today's episode because there'll be more of that coming this week. Between now and then, though, Garrett, why don't you tell people where they can find more of your content? 
everything's over at amove.tv, so go check that out. We just put up an episode of The Angry Chicken where you may hear uh, from someone, if you're a WoW fan, that you are familiar with the name of, but maybe not so much the voice of, Celestilon. Stop oh. by The Angry Chicken yeah. to talk all about the history of the new card Zephyrus for Saviors of Uldum. This card, Scott, took Team 5 literally years to create. Oh my gosh. Years. years. The single card. That's a lot. And years are a lot. Celestalon took us through a, a deep dive. So if you're really interested kind of in the development, like behind the scenes of Hearthstone, uh, it's a great episode. Um, so nice. go, go give it a listen. Nice. Uh, highly recommend it. Go do that. That is, of course, the Angry Chicken available at amove.tv and wherever you get your podcasts. I think that's going to do it for us. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Don't forget to email us. That email we got earlier came to us at the instance at gmail.com uh, you can also find us at uh, the instance.net and if you're looking for us on twitter at instance show garrett art you can find me at scott johnson you can also uh, find more shows like this at frogpants.com and i highly recommend it until next friday when we do this all again have a fantastic few days we'll see you then This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Yeah. I forgot my mic was live. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I heard like a murk or just, something. You're freaking smooth jazz, man. This just makes me laugh.